Right then, everybody, five things we learned from Manchester United 1 1 against FC 20. We'll be talking Ten Hag, Ericsson, some more individual players, and yeah, really dissecting the game a bit more in today's video. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first thing we learned Ericsson dilemma. What do we do with Ericsson? Because, in one hand, he score a goal. But the other hand, he can cost us the game, ultimately, in a glimpse. And I know that was a little error by Ericsson, but it did cost us three points. Um, we dropped two, ultimately. And I think Ericsson is becoming... This was always the risk for starting Ericsson. We know he's a very, very good player, technically, but he just simply can't do it anymore. He hasn't got the legs. And he always doesn't look... That is the that is the only worry with him. As I said, no doubt, technically brilliant. He scored two goals last week against Barnsley. Um, played well against Palace. And scored a great goal against FC20. But he simply cannot do it anymore um, in the big games where you need to rely on Ericsson. He is a huge risk. Um, and that is disappointing because I think Ericsson is a very, very sharp player. Someone who I think Manchester United kind of have relied on at times. And I think going forward... Um, and I don't think this is due to like Ericsson not having legs. It was just a simple error. Um, and I think in the next game against Spurs, I don't think he will be in the team. Um, I think he will be dropped or benched or whatever you want to call it. But listen, Ericsson for me should be someone that should be should be leaving United next summer. Um, I don't think he's like he's good enough, but he hasn't got the pace or the legs to do it. Same with Casemiro. I think on his day he can have a good game, but way too inconsistent. So the first thing we learned: Ericsson risk. The second thing um, we learned, Ten Hag got it wrong. I think Ten Hag's massively at fault for their decisions yesterday. I think keeping on Bruno Fernandes, which I'll talk about again, was a really, really bad decision. And Eric Ten Hag will have to face the criticism for that. Bruno Fernandes' performance yesterday was horrible. Um, and for me, lacked what a Manchester United player looked. And that's not only the last... It wasn't only this game where he did that. It was... Games last season, it was games prior to this one. He just looks really out of touch at the minute, and ever since getting that new contract, he has just hasn't looked himself. Um, and listen, he's a player who's passionate, but when he's, he's just decision making, um, I mean, in the 94th minute, deciding to shoot from that free kick, just a, a waste. Um, and Ten Hag does seem to have a reluctance to take off certain players in certain moments of the game. We know Bruno's your captain, but everyone has good games. Um, sorry, everyone has good games, everyone has bad games. And at that point, Bruno was having a bad game, and I would have took it off. Would have took him off. Ten Hag put him on the right-hand side to shoehorn, shoehorn him into the team. He couldn't have any impact for us on that side. And it was a waste. Why not have Rashford or Garnacho on that side who are actual wingers who can actually provide a threat from that side? Um, and again, that's, I think, on Ten Hag. So I think Ten Hag's mistakes... Again, cost us. I think it's always um, two steps forward, one step back in Manchester United. And that is the real, real worry at this current moment at the football club. So that's the second thing we learned. The third thing we learned, you've got to take concern. Now, I'm not going to be too reactionary. He's probably not even had 10 training sessions with Manchester United. But he just did look a bit leggy yesterday, made a few mistakes. And that's just my personal opinion. I definitely will start him against Spurs. But you could see... Eric Ten Hag kind of try and ease him in. I think he needs a bit more of that defensive support. And some, and yesterday he did look kind of on his own in that midfield. And that's something that not only Casemiro, Mainu, Eriksen has been kind of victimised of. So it isn't an Ugarte issue. I think his passing was good. I mean, he made a few sloppy passes, but so did the whole team. But ultimately for me, I think Ugarte will come good as a sign-in. It's just about really slowly trying to ease him in to the football club, which I think he will. He's a quality player, one with so much potential and I'm not going to go in on him he is 23 it was what third game for United I think his first full, full start um listen there's there's work there to be done with Ugarte certainly and I definitely will think he'd be a big player though he has that fight you can see that when he plays um and ultimately for me a very, very decent player so that's the third thing we learn the fourth thing Rashford sharp I mean Rashford was on the bench in that last game against Palace for me, unders uh, undeservedly so. But he looked absolutely sharp. I mean, that uh, that flip flat was utter filth. Um, his overall performance was absolutely fantastic. And yes, he didn't get the goal. But again, football for a striker is about goals. But in Rashford's case, really not being positive in some games, it was so great to see him get a goal. Um, it was so seeing playing with a smile, confidence on his face, taking the ball, taking on players, putting crosses into the box, skills, all of that. Like 
It was great to see and I'm hoping he can build this confidence and momentum now and take it on to the game that we have. We've got Spurs, Porto and Villa our next three games. Some tough, tough games for United. And we need the players on top form to kind of help us get over the line. So, yeah, Rashford looked very, very sharp and up to it now. The fourth thing we learned, the, sorry, the fifth thing that we learned, mistakes cost us. That one mistake at the back for Manchester United massively cost us. And there was three, four sequence of events that you can look at that massively cost us. Um, for example, Maguire um, sliding in when he didn't need to. Martinez out of position. He was actually behind the 20 player as they were running down. Um, the mistake from Ericsson cost us. Onana, I think, could have done better on the goal. Like, so much little tiny margins, which could have made the game go in a different way for United. Ultimately, it didn't happen. And it really is disappointing. I was hoping that United could have a positive start in that game and really have an impact. Um, I was hoping we'd have a clean sheet, score some goals, but ultimately it was the opposite of that. Yes, we didn't lose the game, but these first three Europa League games are tough. And it would be... A sackable offence, an embarrassment if United don't make it out of the Europa League. And I know it's very, very early on, but still, we've got tough games. I think we've got Porto in our group. We've got other teams as well that we should win, but as we've seen with 20, 20 is a team we should have won, and or a team, yeah, a team we should have beat. And ultimately, we didn't have, have the minerals to get over the line. But listen, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Obviously, preview will be coming out tomorrow, press conference reaction as well. Five things to expect, all of that stuff, red review, building up, talking Spurs game. Much, much more as well coming out on the channel. Please do subscribe if you did enjoy. These have been the five things to expect. No, sorry, what? Five things we learned from United's 1-1 draw at home to FC20. A disappointing result. Um, and this, I'm hoping we can build um, from here and learn the mistakes and make the necessary changes needed because, listen, Spurs... We'll thrash us if we play the way we did against 20. Um, Ten Hag got some big decisions to make, um, and I'm sure he will. He can't be too reactionary, but I think it's good these five things to expect. Might tweak the video a little bit to do everything we learned, but listen, ultimately for me, we've got to change because, as I said, Spurs are a team with who are better than FC 20 and will cause us issues. They have one day less rest um, because they're playing in the Europa League, but I'll talk more about that in the preview. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, five things we learned. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Put your opinions in the comments. I'd love to see your thoughts. Um, thank you for watching. This has been another video on All Things United talking about the mighty Manchester United for today's the end. Legends. Um, and yeah, please just continue to like and subscribe. I'll catch you soon. Peace.